Hi code breakers! Today I'm going to teach you how to use and how to break a Caesar cipher. Let's go! So first what I'm going to do, I'm going to load up a program that helps me to get my point across really really quickly. I'm going to click run. This is a Python script uh, written in a programming language called Python if you're curious about it. But I'm not going to use this right now. I'm going to demonstrate the concept. So one way we can hide a message is by using a reg the regular alphabet and creating a new mapping that kind of obscures the meaning of every letter. So we have our regular alphabet here. What we're going to do, we're going to change it so that B, um, A is then mapped to B and C is then mapped to D and so on. So if we shift it forward one character, this is what we're doing. And uh, now, well, this A at the back then goes all the way to the front. And this is a Caesar shift of one. So what's gonna happen here is that I will take this, put this over there. So this is my plain alphabet and this is my cipher alphabet I didn't write cipher did I there we go so let's suppose I had some sort of message which I will call a plain text and uh, the one that I had chosen was making a uh, split the text to columns and there we go everybody's in their own cell so I'm going to produce a cipher text so now how is this going to work for every A in our plain message becomes an N in other words every letter is just mapped to the, letter. the next letter A becomes you see A here it becomes a B the K in the plain alphabet becomes an L. The I in the plain alphabet becomes a J. Can you see the pattern? N becomes what? If you said O, oh, you're correct. And G will then become an H. Now, I have a program that does that for me. I'm going to shift it by one and uh, the message, let me see, I already, as you can see here, the NBLJOH is the same here as it is in my program that produces this type of text. So that's what I mean in the tutorial. What, what would happen if you used a Caesar shift of two? Well, if we shift it by two, let's, so conceptually this is what will happen. Your plain alphabet, you, we're gonna put that there briefly. And then what I'm going to do, shift it forward by two, and this is what's gonna happen. Well, of course, A and B are now trailing. So now A becomes C. And A and B go there. So now Y is mapped to A and C is mapped. And Z is mapped to, D, to B. Together, these will form the new plain alphabet and a new cipher alphabet. and uh, I have my plain text over here so what we're going to do we're so this is 
shift by one and uh, this is shift by two or maybe I should have put it somewhere else anyway you all know what I mean so M is now mapped to what? M in the plain alphabet is now mapped to O An A is now and now becomes a C. A K becomes an M. And uh, those of you following the tutorial document that I sent, you will be able to know that the other letters are as follows. You can see the I. I is now mapped to K, and N is now mapped to P. Q is now mapped to G. Uh, no, so, sorry. So. Why am I saying Q? G is mapped to I. I'm looking at two things at the same time. And I can go on and produce the, the rest of it. But for you to see how it works, we invoke our cipher function. Press enter. And then I shift by one two. And then There we go. And as we can see, we produce a message. So the real question is now, suppose you had some sort of message and uh, I don't know, let's make something random, I guess. So let's cipher something up. What number shall we pick? Probably let's pick six. And what message do we want to encrypt? Hmm, interesting. What message would I like? What do I want for Christmas? My two front teeth. But I have my front teeth though, so don't judge. And uh, here's my insight for passage. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna modify that just a little bit. So I can do that cipher. Input key six. Okay, my two. All right, so here we go. And nice and neat. And let's go back to our program. So here we have a cipher text. And I'm going to paste that there. I'm going to split the text to columns. Good. So we want a pl we want a plain text. But the thing is, well, what we need is a key. What's the key? We don't know. Well, let's suppose you found out that the key was six. That means that somebody took the original alphabet, the plain alphabet, and they shifted it forward by six. So which means that what you have to do, you will then on pen and pen or paper or whatever. You have your alphabet and you shift it back by six characters. So before what I did, for a shift by one, I just started at one space before. And for a shift by two, I started two spaces before. So which means one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And all of these other letters are trailing. So we cut them off. And we paste them at the end, and that's how you produce the the cipher alphabet if you know the key. So now this is the plain alphabet, and this is the cipher alphabet. Now what's gonna happen is, well actually we kinda need to take the plain alphabet down a bit. Okay, so let's see. For every S, we need what? Well, for every S, let's look here. For every ciphered S, we're gonna need an M. So let's see here, what I have in my program. 
there we go. So we see that we have M there. So we put M and E. For every ciphered E, we produce a Y. Y. For every ciphered Z in our cipher text, Z is there. We need a T. And uh, for every ciphered C, we're a C there. We produce a W. For every U in our cipher text, we have what in our plain text, an O. And you can see we start to spell out everything. So for every uh, L, we have an L here. So what is that? F, we have an X. X corresponds to R. We have a U. U corresponds to O. T corresponds to N. And it goes on and on. Well, I have a function that does that. Oh no. Sorry about that. I was not supposed to do that. Put that in. Must to decipher. What's the key? Hmm. Five? No, that doesn't work. If you got a wrong key, you're not gonna oh sorry. Right. Forget about that. The decipher function that I want. Message to decipher this. Hmm, what's the key? The correct key is six. Okay. And so if you use the wrong key, you're gonna get another scrambled message. You're not gonna really make that much sense out of it. But you use the right key, you unscramble the message. And that's the goal of this competition. You have to unscramble using whatever key you discover. I'm gonna find a bunch of different ways to hide the key and stuff. So let's see how quickly you can uncover the key and how quickly you can unscramble the message to get the right result. Remember, you have to submit your results via a Google form that collects your email. Your email is used to identify you and track your progress throughout the entire competition. And uh, it also makes it easier for me to see who got the solution right for us, so who gets the ma maximum points, and uh, everybody who gets their answer right on this day will then get the highest points, and then the next day, and so on. So, Really, you have to solve this thing as quick as you possibly can because if somebody solves it on day one, they get four points. If you, if you, the next day that the solution may be available, let's say that day one was day one was a Monday, and the second day that somebody got the answer right was Wednesday, everybody gets one point less, and on the third day everybody gets two points, and on the every day afterwards everybody will get one point, and by the end of the week. If nobody gets it, everybody else who's registered for the composition, they get zero. So that's how this stuff works. I hope this, this, this was helpful. And uh, let's see you break some codes. And I have a lot more puzzles ready for all of you. So let's see what you can do. Take care for now, code breakers. See you next time.